Just minutes after takeoff, something went terribly wrong. The plane disappeared from radar without a single warning. Sriwijaya Air Flight 182 had just left Jakarta's Sukarno Hatta Airport, bound for Pontianak. On board were 62 people, families heading home, workers traveling for business, children excited for new adventures. The cabin was calm, the engines were steady, the skies were cloudy, but not stormy. It was a flight like any other, simple, routine, uneventful. But then in the blink of an eye, the plane vanished. No distress call. Air traffic controllers lost contact. Then, the questions flooded in. What had happened? Where was the plane? And how could a modern plane, with experienced pilots and all the latest technology, disappear so suddenly? Stick around, because we're about to reveal exactly what happened on that fateful day. This is the story of Sriwijaya Air Flight 182. It was January 9th, 2021, still deep in the global coronavirus pandemic. Air travel was slower than usual. Many flights had been canceled, and airports felt quieter than before. But life was trying to move forward. At Jakarta's Sukarno Hatta International Airport, one of Indonesia's busiest airports, preparations were underway for Flight 182. The plane assigned was a Boeing 737, registered as PKCLC and nicknamed Citra. Built in 1994, this aircraft had flown tens of thousands of hours and carried passengers safely across Indonesia for many years. During the pandemic, this plane had been grounded for months at Surabaya's Wanda Airport. After a detailed inspection and a new certificate of airworthiness, it was cleared to fly again on December 17, 2020. The crew was experienced. Captain Afwan was 54 years old, with nearly 18,000 flight hours, including over 9,000 on the Boeing 737. He was a former Indonesian Air Force pilot, respected for his calm and steady manner. His co-pilot, First Officer Diego Mamahit, was 34, with over 5,000 flight hours, mostly on this plane. Four flight attendants completed the team, ready to serve the passengers. But the weather was not cooperating. Jakarta was experiencing heavy monsoon rains, thick clouds, and strong winds swept through the area. Because of the downpour, Flight 182's departure was delayed. Passengers sat waiting inside the plane as the rain lashed against the windows. The delay stretched longer than expected. Still, the pilots carefully monitored the weather and air traffic controllers worked to keep flights moving safely despite the storm. Eventually, the rain eased enough for takeoff, but soon it would take a tragic turn. It was 2.36 in the afternoon local time. After waiting nearly an hour due to heavy monsoon rains, Sriwijaya Air Flight 182 finally lifted off from runway 25, right at Swakarno Hatta International Airport. The aircraft banked westward, climbing into the sky above Jakarta, headed for the coastal city of Pontianak. The scheduled flight was just 90 minutes long, but within four minutes, something would go terribly wrong. The climb began normally. Air traffic control had cleared the aircraft to rise to 29,000 feet, cruising altitude. But then, the aircraft started to drift slightly off course. It veered to the northwest. From the ground, controllers noticed this. They radioed the pilots to ask about the change. There was no reply. Seconds later, the aircraft vanished from radar. Inside the cockpit, a critical technical problem was developing. The left engine began to slow down, but the right engine kept pushing hard. This created a dangerous imbalance. One side of the plane was working harder than the other. The airplane began to roll slightly to the left, but the autopilot tried to correct it, turning right. For a few moments, the systems were fighting each other. The plane held on, barely. But the difference in power grew worse. The left engine slowed even more. The autopilot reached its limits. Then, it disconnected. Now the aircraft was left unprotected, and the imbalance between engines forced the plane into a sharp bank, first to the left, then even more sharply. The captain grabbed the controls. He tried to pull the aircraft back, but his movements may have made things worse. In just seconds, the plane rolled past 90 degrees. It was now almost upside down. The nose dropped. The Boeing was now diving very fast. The first officer shouted out a warning. The aircraft had entered what pilots call an upset condition, when the plane is no longer flying in a controlled way. Captain Afwan realized what had happened. He pulled back hard on the yoke, trying to raise the nose and level the wings. For a brief moment, he almost succeeded, but it was too late. The plane was now too low and moving far too fast. Just four minutes after takeoff, at around 2.40 in the afternoon, 
Sriwijaya Air Flight 182 slammed belly first into the Java Sea near Laki Island, only 19 kilometers from Jakarta. The impact was catastrophic. When the flight vanished from radar, no one knew exactly where it had gone. But within minutes, oil slicks were spotted on the surface of the Java Sea, and soon the reality became clear. This wasn't a survivable crash, and there were no survivors. Things were floating in the water, torn clothing, twisted metal, electronics, and aviation fuel. Some rescuers recovered body parts. Others found passports, shoes, and children's bags, the last belongings of people who had vanished just moments after takeoff. The water was only 50 feet deep, but the destruction was total. Wreckage was shattered into small pieces. A life vest, the rim of a wheel, and parts of the fuselage were recovered, all pointing to a high-speed impact. But the question everyone asked was still unanswered. Why did this happen? To find out, they needed the black boxes. And so the search continued. Finally, after weeks of diving, the missing voice recorder module was found, buried deep in the seabed mud. What it revealed and would shock even the experts. But before we get to the truth uncovered inside that cockpit, take a moment to like this video if you haven't already. This helps us keep creating deep dive documentaries like this. Now, if we look into the aftermath, the grief was overwhelming. Families gathered near the harbor. Some waited at home, staring at news updates that brought no survivors. On January 22nd, families were taken to the crash site by boat. There, just above the sea where Flight 182 had gone down, they scattered flowers in memory of their loved ones. Plans were made to build a memorial on Lankang Island, where wreckage and remains had been recovered. And now let's go inside the investigation. What really brought Flight 182 down? Just hours after the crash, Indonesia's National Transportation Safety Committee, or NTSC, officially opened an investigation. They were joined by experts from the United States, including the NTSB, Boeing, and engine manufacturer CFM International. Singapore also offered assistance. The first clue came from the radar and air traffic control recordings. Investigators also retrieved voice communications between the pilots and ATC. Meanwhile, weather data was pulled from Indonesia's meteorology agency. It confirmed that moderate to heavy rainfall had blanketed the area during takeoff. Thunderstorms were reported, and towering cumulonimbus clouds reaching 15 kilometers high were detected in the vicinity. But scientists at Leipan, the National Institute of Aeronautics and Space, later clarified the conditions were not considered extreme. Still, the pilots had requested a heading change shortly after takeoff due to bad weather. Underwater, divers discovered a scattered debris field so widely dispersed that experts began to suspect the plane may have broken apart on impact. The shape of the engine's fan blades hinted that the engines were still producing power when the aircraft hit the water. But as the search intensified, so did public suspicion. Was the plane truly airworthy? Some recalled that the aircraft had been stored for months in Surabaya. During the COVID-19 pandemic, maintenance concerns were raised. Others pointed to a prior airworthiness directive from the FAA involving this Boeing model's engine mounts. Sriwijaya Air insisted the aircraft was safe. The Ministry of Transportation confirmed it had passed inspection and received a renewed airworthiness certificate just three weeks before the crash. Then on January 15th, divers recovered the flight data recorder, and the NTSC was able to download all 330 parameters. The picture was becoming clearer. The preliminary report released in February described what may have gone wrong. The report did not place blame, but it did begin to reveal a troubling sequence inside the cockpit of Flight 182. According to the recovered flight data recorder, the auto throttle system malfunctioned during the climb. It is a system that controls engine power automatically. The system reduced power to the left engine, while the right engine continued to push forward. The result was an invisible imbalance. Instead of climbing smoothly into the sky, the aircraft slowly began turning left. Inside the cockpit, the pilots did not appear to notice the imbalance in time. The preliminary report also confirmed the aircraft was still responding to control inputs, even in its final seconds. This suggested that the jet had not broken apart in the air. It hit the sea surface in one piece with engines still producing thrust, but why the crew didn't recover from the developing turn, or why the auto throttle failed in the first place, was still a mystery. So on November 10, 2022, the final report into the crash of Sriwijaya Air Flight was released. 
Its conclusions echoed much of what the preliminary findings had already revealed, but now the picture was complete. The crash was caused by asymmetrical thrust, but the final report went deeper. At the heart of it all was a faulty auto throttle system, one that had been acting up for months. The cruise thrust split monitor, designed to detect these kinds of problems, failed to shut the system down. Why? Investigators traced the failure to signal interference from the aircraft's own spoiler system. It was a flaw that had gone undetected. And here, the final report revealed a deeper concern. The crew wasn't trained to recover from an upset condition. There were no stall warnings, no emergency radio calls, just a descent, silent, uncontrolled, and over in seconds. It was not one fatal error. It was many linked together, a technical fault, a failed safeguard, and a critical gap in training. That's when Sriwijaya Air began responding. Pilot training was improved, especially in upset recovery. Maintenance procedures were updated, and engineers were retrained. Auto throttle and spoiler systems were inspected across the fleet. Indonesia's state insurance company announced compensation of 50 million rupiah, just over $3,500, for each victim's family. The Ministry of Social Affairs added another 15 million rupiah, but for the loved ones, money meant nothing. Meanwhile, the Indonesian government formed a national task force to implement upset recovery training across all airlines. That task force worked with international experts, finalized regulations, and set a new standard by October 2021. Boeing also responded. It issued technical directions on inspecting auto throttle systems and flap wiring. The FAA followed, mandating inspections within 250 flight hours. Later, Boeing updated the maintenance planning documents for the entire Boeing 737 series, requiring repetitive spoiler and aileron checks. Flight 182 was supposed to be ordinary, but within four minutes of takeoff, it became a national tragedy. Since then, systems have changed, training has changed, but in aviation, every fix is written in the memory of those who never came home. Why do these tragedies keep happening, even in modern aviation? Do you think stricter inspections alone can prevent another disaster like this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you learned something new, please subscribe to our channel. We cover forgotten crashes, final moments, and the real stories behind aviation's darkest days. Thank you for watching.